which they still don't first. <laughs> um, but it, it's interesting. I've always known that I wanted to be an actor, but to plot your path in this world, I mean, I, I didn't know where, I, I didn't know what that meant or how to navigate the industry or how to make choices. I, I never wanted to be famous. I think the, the trajectory for people who are chasing that is much different for, that's, that wasn't ever what I was chasing. So, my path sort of has been, so you just sort of run into stuff. And it's only been recently until after Warehouse where I actually was able to take a step back and, um, you know, the great thing about doing a show for five years is that it affords you a little bit of financial stability, which in this business there isn't a lot of. I've been very fortunate to have that. Um, I took a step back and, you know, I wanted to do projects that I really believe in. Um, and everyone's like, where have you been? And I'm like, I've been very picky about what yeah, I wanted it to do. Yeah, and that. just the type of roles, especially as I've gotten older, that are available and how competitive it is for these wonderful roles, which we now see a lot of on television, but you're competing with people like Laura Linney and, you know, Oscar winners. Um, so I sort of took a step back a couple of years ago, and was like, what do I want? And the, the answer to that question was, I want to tell stories that matter to me. Yeah. Um, and how do I do that? I don't think it's, I don't, being an actor is quite a powerless profession. You're sort of pushed by the currents of who they're casting and what's hot. And so I was like, how do I do that? And I was like, well, I know I can write. So I think I'm going to start writing. Uh, so I wrote for four years, and it was the first one. I was like, I can't show this to anyone. The second one, <laughs> this is pretty terrible too. The third one, I was like, this is just getting embarrassing. <laughs> the fourth one, I was like, I was like, okay, I can start. And so I basically taught myself how to write, and now I'm really interested in putting together shows about subjects that mean a lot to me, and about women, about relationships that I want to see between women, and. I think that the interesting thing that sort of kicked that off was the whole Barry and Wells thing. Because I realized that there were dynamics in women's relationships that weren't being told. And I really want to be a part of a community that does that. So that's where I'm at. That's amazing. Chip, chipping away at my psyche as well. Um, so 
So playing Helena was really amazing. And it is interesting that she was, you know, we, we flipped that. She was actually based on a man. And actually maybe that was what gave the writers the freedom to allow her to be a fully, you know, better, more well-rounded and not so sexualized woman. So, you know, I, you know slowly we'll get there. <laughs> without it and that's that's magic that's spirit that's god that's whatever you want to call it and the beginning of all creation and whether you want to have kids or not like there's ways of like you know through breath work and through centering through meditation connecting to that creativity and pulling that energy up and and having it flow through your body and being fully embodied and i think that you know that may have been scary, uh, you know, over over time for for, for, for for men, and I think yeah. that you know that's where you know burning at the stake, and you know yeah. it, was, it was that power. It was like constantly trying to repress that power. Yeah. Well, you feel like you've been robbed of your right to speak. You know, it's so interesting. My voice is actually down here. You know, this is how I actually talk. But now I talk out here because it's a lot less threatening to people when I speak like this. You know, and it's, I wasn't even conscious of that for a really long time. And then if I get pissed, I'm like, oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's my Eddie voice. <laughs> but it's interesting because so you're you're actually kind of going out of your way not to threaten men, and then you know. I, I don't know, you know, I've only ever been an actually, so I don't know if it's the same for you guys, but often I'm, I'm like, oh God, how do I disarm this woman as well? How do, I, how do I make this woman feel okay and know that I'm not a threat, that I am a friend, that I am a sister, that there's no, and, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but it's a big energy production. You know, it, 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 you know, you know it's, it's a lot of energy that you're expending and it'd be really great if we could all be like, hey, the gloves are off. 
Safe space. Safe space. Safe space. Safe space. Safe space. Safe space. I think we're I think we're getting there, but I think we have a ways to go as well. I, and I think I think one of the reasons I that I want to tell stories with the narratives that I, I want to see that the di enhancing dynamics between women is because I think that the narratives we see on television and in film um, and on the front covers of the magazines, on the articles we read. Yeah, thus far, do pit us against one another. And I think that, you know, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? You know? So, what produced the Kardashians? I don't know. <laughs> 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 Oval Office advising Donald Trump. Like, uh, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he thinks she's amazing. Of course, she, of course he does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but my pussy ain't up the grass. <laughs>
relationships. It was about the warehouse. Yeah. You know what I mean? And everything sort of, there was, Jack did come to me to, to, to honestly, to, to be fair. Um, he did come to me with a whole um, freezing my eggs, uh, getting Eddie as a sperm donor scenario, and I tied off shit. Thank um, you. I, <laughs> <laughs> um, I just had been, you know, I fought really hard on that show for her. I fought really, really hard, and also to, to I fought really hard to make the relationships, you know, with Micah and Claudia and HG, and to uh, really not go the competitive route with it. Um, and by year five. I was a little worn out, um, and and so I was so upset with the fact that they were ending her wanting to have a child. Um, I was just kind of was like, I can't. I she would like, why does she need to want a kid? Why why does she have to want a child? Why why the warehouse is her kid? She she. This is a woman who's obsessed with her work, you know, and I never really understood that storyline, so I sort of tapped out. I was just like, yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, Again, it might be a bit of a male, kind of like, like uh, it is kind of, you, thank God women are starting to, you know, make more TV and film and, and write. And direct more because, because the narrative of a woman's well, story well, doesn't have to end with a child. Also, saying words that are written by a man, you know, I, I mean, nineteen percent, no, oh, I mean more, than more, that. more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, think about the even the set of Warehouse. Mm -hmm. I was so excited when Jamie came because behind the camera is all men, mm -hmm. all men, and it's cool, but you can only laugh at so many dick jokes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> starting to open up, but it's, it's, you know, it's, we need more women to step up. Mm -hmm. We do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Hello. <laughs> oh, I asked a lot of artists this question. I love getting actors perspective, how do you deal with burnout and just like being drained of creativity? Because <laughs> you can't like get up from your desk and just take a walk or anything because you're on set. We were just talking about that. Yeah. So you're asking all these questions that we were just, just really <laughs> having conversations about. You know when I renegotiated for Warehouse 13, I had my lawyers tell me that my periods had stopped. <laughs> How and, and I fought for equal and pay. they had <laughs> they did for two years because I was so tired. Yeah. Um, but but that, that's the thing as well. Like, you know, I, I said this to you. You know, you know, you're working seventeen hour days, and and then and then you're so you start at like you are up at like four thirty five thirty on a Monday morning, and you're doing seventeen hour days, and then they have to give you an eleven hour turnaround, right? Unless they break the turnaround. And then so by the time you get to Friday, you're starting at three or four o'clock in the afternoon and you're working until like six or seven, eight. Until dawn, until they lose the light. Yeah. And then they start you again at four a.m. on Monday. And especially and like think about Jamie who had to do defiance, who had to go into hair makeup on top of two and a half hours before everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and 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 you know we do have a monthly cycle, which needs to be taken care of, and but then also we do really want to be treated equally as well, and we want to be, you know, we are you know strong, you know, but it's also different. We're not kind of messing up your whole you know hormonal and endocrine system. You know, men don't men are lucky that they. You know, they have a cycle of life, not a monthly cycle. Well, the monthly cycle is amazing as well, but it just doesn't fit very well with 17 hour days. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, both of us have ended up getting quite ill. And then, 
kind of like trying to kind of like deal with that on our own because we don't want people to know that we're unwell until you reach breaking point. And then everyone thinks they're a crazy fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've been sitting on this for six months. <laughs> so yeah, it's really hard and like having boundaries and I do feel like often, you know, on some of these shows you're constantly, you know, trying to kind of fight for your rights, fight for the rights of your character, fight for the rights of your health, fight for the rights to sleep, you know. And 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 and, and as women you often feel really bad about that because you're asking for things and we're taught not to ask for things, to please, to appease, to smile, to say thank you, you know. So it can be quite a struggle, you know, and, and I think that, you know, women actresses have over the years got the reputation of being a little crazy or being difficult and actually you're not really being difficult. But you're not really being difficult, you're just trying to survive, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think that what we've seen in the past year or two years with all of these narratives coming out, um, you know, this, this whole Me Too movement, is how afraid women have been to speak up. That we've literally been robbed of our voice. And I think right now we're sort of riding a crest where, where that's becoming acknowledged in a way, you know, that we're, we're so afraid also if we're difficult and somebody hears about us, we might not get cast. So what am I going to do? I'm going to keep my mouth shut so I can work, you know, the fear of pissing off the people in, in power in an industry that is capricious at best, you know, and, and and it's not fair, frankly. Like, if you want a fair shot, get out of Hollywood. It's not, that's not the way the industry works. You know, um, we sit on, we sit on a lot. Um, but it's also kind of amazing because it turns you, it does, you are forced to become this entity, you know, without all of the pressure of the industry and my frustrations and feeling um, feeling sidelines mm -hmm. and my utter anger at um, not having a voice. I have created a series because of that. It's what you do with it. Um, and I think that, you know, that's how a diamond becomes a diamond. I put it under a lot of pressure. <laughs> I've also become the, the therapist for all of my friends, um, <laughs> uh, all of my, my, my female friends, yeah, some of my male ones too, but, um, and I think that, uh, and, and, they're, and they're, uh, most of my friends are non-actresses, right? And, and it's like, you know, I'm, I'm often like, well, well, what is it that you want? Well, well, how do you feel? Is that really how you feel? Or is that really what you want? Or has your wants got so tied up with pleasing others that you actually don't know what you want anymore? Like you need to get clear on that. You need to meditate on that. And I actually think that that's because at such a young age, we had to kind of like fight for our rights. And I'm always kind of trying to encourage my my, my sisters, my, my my female friends, to actually get in touch with that because um, I, we're not conditioned to be in touch with those feelings. And I think. I think personally that it makes us sick. I think it makes us ill. And so um, I think that the more we get in touch with our most authentic selves and what we want and what makes us feel good and our instincts, right? You, you know, you know, a lot of us are really out of touch with our instincts because we want to please and we want to get in. But actually, that's what makes us sick. Hi, my name is Becca. Uh, I'm from Brazil, and my question is for Jane. Uh, I'm a Most Fun Time fan, and I just want to know how was it work with the cast, like especially Lana and Jennifer? How what was it work with the cast on Most Fun Time cast? Oh, it's the Most Fun Time cast. Oh, the Most Fun Time cast. They were amazing. Um, well, they, that was a family that had been together for uh, 
six, seven years ago. It was my... They've been together for seven years, so that was a finely honed machine. And, um, and a family, you know, with, you know, everything that a family entails. But, you know, and, and I think that, that after seven years, you know, everyone's grateful that they had a job for that long. But they're, oh, hello. <laughs> they're, they're, they're ready, they're ready to leave. Oh, am I, yeah. You're good, it's a small room, yeah. Am I good? It's cool, man. Um, so, so, so I think that there was a, se a, a sense that school was out. You know, school was out. Um, but I, I, I love working with them, they're awesome. I think Jen's here today, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited to see her today. I really enjoyed the scenes at the end of the show where I had her in the mental institution. <laughs> <laughs> It's really, really good stuff that was. Um, I don't really have that many scenes with Lana, yeah. but um, she's a big um, Grateful Dead, uh, she's a Deadhead um, fan. Um, and um, I recently took her to a concert, so we were bonded with that, and she's a, she's a wild woman. <laughs> oh, yeah, she is. So, um, so, yeah, I love working with them all, I love working with them all. The person that I really bonded with actually was um, Giles Natalie, who played my grandson. I never thought I'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this like big strapping lad, and he was my grandson in the show. Um, Hot grandson. <laughs> <laughs> so cute, and I just love him so much. And if you ever get a chance to come to a convention where we're both there, we, we, yeah. he, he's, he actually reminded me a bit of. A, a young Tony Curran, um, actually, he's kind of like, yeah, he's, he's wild, so. We'll give us more hot water. Oh, good. <laughs> good, but they're amazing, amazing. I remember watching the show and just being in total awe. Um, I was wondering when you guys kind of realized there was something like magical happening, at least between like your two characters, chemistry wise. I remember watching like Time Will Tell and all those episodes and just being wondering like how did all that like build up to be what it was? If that makes sense? Like chemistry wise? I'm having trouble hearing. Because the echo. What? What? <laughs> I was asking. Um, the chemistry about how we felt about the chemistry. Yeah, I mean, how we when did you realize that something magical was happening? Because you guys were able to take over like an entire board of people in like two episodes. Like, <laughs> how? Uh, well, uh, it's interesting. I mean, we were just actors working off one another. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was just moment to moment work. Um, but, you know, sometimes when you're working with actors, everyone has a different um, technique and uh, a different process. And sometimes, you know, people come in and you're working with people and or someone's on a show for a long time and they're just doing their thing. And you're like, okay, now it's my line and I'm gonna do the best that I can. And, you know, sometimes that looks perfectly fine on camera and you just kind of try and do the best you can. But then you're working with other people and it's like, oh, this, per oh, this person's playing with me. This person wants to play. Oh, there's a light in their eyes. There's something going on. Oh, this take is different to the one before, and what's going to happen in the next one? So there's like a sense of um, kind of an energy flow and life in a scene, which you don't always get, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a gift. It is. And just to have someone to be like, basically it's like passing the ball. To have somebody you know, like somebody tosses it one way, you catch it funny, you're like, oh this feels good, and you just keep tossing it. And so that's we just sort of happened upon it and started to play. And um and I she also is so gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> you try like saying your lines and looking into those eyes and not seeing something. <laughs> I'm just a woman here. <laughs> think it's like a box. Mm -hmm. I think we, it didn't even, it didn't even cross my mind to not play that energy with her. Because I, I, it, I didn't, it didn't, I was like, this is interesting. I'm going to see where this goes. And, and also, you know, there was a lot of kind of, um, although it wasn't written that way, there were a lot of themes that apply to lovers in our relationship. And 
you know, themes of um, kind of trust, of betrayal, of kind of, you know, begging for forgiveness, you know, all that sort of stuff. But, doesn't often happen in a platonic relationship. So it kind of it did lead lead itself lend itself to some of this stuff as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Have you ever had someone that you worked with that has this thing on the just like you just try had to kind of be fake very hard. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Faking my tits off. <laughs> dig into your box and really use your training yeah. and, um, and and you know and the playing between you know action and cut is is, is a gift mm -hmm. you know that's a gift and that's what you do it for but sometimes it's kind of painful and sometimes it's just a job and, and that's where you have to kind of really kind of put your game face on and be a professional but um, yeah it, it happens all the time and sometimes the sweetest people but you know they just um you know, there's no there there, and, and they're kind of, you know, they're not even trying to connect, they're not kind of, like, reading your impulses, they're not kind of, they're not even looking at you sometimes, and you're just, or, or they don't know their lines, <laughs> you know, yeah. or, or they're doing kind of, oh my god, I, I, I was going to say, no, um, I won't just say when, but I worked with somebody <laughs> at some point in my life. <laughs> It was like he made all his decisions <laughs> about everything he was going to do and actually everything that I should do <laughs> before he came to set. And his ideas weren't that great. I mean, they were not that great. They were like so on the nose. And 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 he would also. It was. It was. I mean, I was doing having to do a lot of handling as well because he was. Um, uh, you know, he, he was a star of the show, and I. You know, I didn't want to upset him, but he would get furious at me when he would play this thing that he had decided and that you were going to react to. Right. That I was going to react a certain way, and then I would react a different way, and he'd be like, "This whole scene is not working because she would be doing this, and she would be quicker or more upset or whatever." And I was like, "Oh yeah, no, I thought about that, and then I just thought it's a really obvious choice, and actually, this is my choice. This is your choice. It's not working. It's not smart." <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Next question? No, you can say anything. <laughs> because it, it's pretty much encapsulated yeah. all of the times that I've been like, I really enjoy doing that to people. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy doing what? Well, you know, doing unexpected shit. So yeah. to have people have to step up. I mean, that's what I do. I once threw a shoe at someone during a scene. I was like, leave the fuck off. <laughs> Oh, but, oh, but what about the actors? That, have you noticed this? This happened to me recently. Um, like you're like, you're in a scene and you do something, and they're like shouting in your face or something, you know, in the scene. Yeah. You know, they're meant to be shouting or whatever. And then, and then you like, just like whisper back. And, <laughs> and then the next take, take they start whispering. whispering. <laughs> Person in the 
Yeah, and um, you know, it's interesting in this industry <laughs> um, the the way that people will try and, as, as a woman, when you, as we've been talking about today, when you try to speak up or. Um, I never really learned how to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> but why should you? I mean, it, well, you know, so as I've gotten older, I've sort of realized how to tone it down and to perhaps make it a little bit more palatable and maybe not be as such a sledgehammer. So, so Lucy Lawless will. <laughs> I thought you guys would like this. She gave me the best bit of advice around that. I was actually on set and um, Spartacus was amazing. Actually, I've forgotten about this. I loved working with Spartacus for so many reasons. The language was amazing, the costumes, like, I love Lucy, blah, blah, blah. Um, but one of the things that was hard is because they, it was quite an ambitious, uh, you know, with, with, you know, what it was doing and, we, and how fast we had to move. The director would often have blocked it out before you got to snare. So you kind of like, you know, and, and there was this one particular day, and I didn't like it very much, but um, there was this one particular day that, you know, he was like, you know, you're here, and then as you say this line, you kind of walk over here. And I was like, okay, um, no, I can't walk forward on that line because what I'm actually saying is something that is kind of like, uh, I'm kind of like nervous about saying, I think I would take a step back and go and run. Step. No, you have to take a step forward on that line, blah, blah, blah. and we kind of ended up kind of getting into it. And the way it worked on that show is you'd kind of come in when you were half ready before you were finished. You'd kind of do the rehearsal, then you'd go back for like to get finished while they did the lighting and everything, and then you'd come back. And so you kind of got into the scene, and I was like, oh. and then Lucy came out to me, and she was like, hey, Jamie. <laughs> and was like, like, thing is, like, the best way to do it is, like, just when he tells you what to do, just kind of nod and go, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. And then, and then when you come back, he'll have forgotten what you said. <laughs> you can just do what you want to do. <laughs> he'll think it's his idea. <laughs> and you'll say to him, that was a great idea. <laughs> you want me to do exactly what you want. And I was like, fucking cheating! <laughs> It's about sometimes when you, sometimes when, <laughs> sometimes when and also you've got this masculine this masculinity where like men everywhere and the, and, and you and you've kind of got all this kind of like you know unresolved issues you probably need some therapy for and you've got like being told what to do by fuck kind of like, and, and there's blank, a bank of men there you're like I can't say anything I can't say anything <laughs> that's how it comes out and it's actually like if you fucking take a gift of that face. <laughs> Um, Reese Witherspoon's company looks amazing. Um, 
There are so many. I actually have a list on my laptop. There's a document that I just keep adding to because there's been so many in the past like couple of years. Um, yeah. What about Mel on our show? Mel? Scavell? Yeah. Did, did, she's been really vocal about the whole movement. And I think she yeah. wrote a book. And, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she, she co-authored the end by um, Sandberg, Michelle Sandberg. Um, yeah, I mean, well, Adnell was one of the first female writers in comedy rooms, which, can you imagine, David Letterman? Yeah, and that's, what the book, uh, that's what the new book is about. It's actually about being a female writer in the uh, um, kind of male-dominated comedy rooms. Yeah, <coughs> yeah, so, yeah, the answer to that question is th those are the ones off the top of my head, but, like, to try and sit down and get in the rooms with all these women. Liz Merriweather is another one, um, and, and, um, you know, try and find uh, a home for the children. And, you know, um, one of the relationships is so interesting. I was talking with other people. She was like, well, what kind of female relationships that, you know, are you trying to write about? And I said, well, picture this. Two women who speak with the same men, and instead of getting married to each other, become lovers. And we ever see that story being told? Why not? Right? Something like that. <laughs> What she said. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just wondering, you've been talking very much so about connecting with yourself, and I was just wondering if you guys had an artifact, what would it be? My vagina. <laughs> connection with other humans, if there was an artifact that could make us all realize that, that would be pretty exciting. Yeah, all this, all this stuff that we're talking about, whether it's between women and women and men and women, it's all about separation, right? Mm -hmm. Because if we didn't feel separate, we wouldn't be able to get into these narcissistic tendencies. Feeling separate is what makes us compete with each other, feel threatened by each other, want to kind of, you know, fight each other. Um, and I think that maybe kind of going back to a time before the patriarchy, <laughs> you know, world. When, when, we were, when we were connected to each other, but the only way that we can be connected to each other is by really being connected with nature and Mother Earth. And if you look at indigenous cultures, you know, when they were honoring the mountains and the plants and the spirit animals, you know, they were all understanding that we were all part of the same organism. And when you feel like that, you feel connected, you can't be separate, and none of this stuff can even exist. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> scrambling to rephrase because you kind of just mentioned it in regards to show running and stuff but I was wondering what your overall goals are with the content you've been creating and then also just like what you're most excited about in regards to making your own stuff now um, um, I think that I'm, I just want to tell stories that I think are important to tell you know um, I really feel like 
I think everybody is unique and wonderful. And I, like I said, I'm so angry of us, especially right now with this administration in the United States. My God, you guys. I mean, it's it, that, that is like the biggest sign of separation that there could possibly be. be yeah. Yes, I'm constantly, you know, um, repulsed, repulsed and angry and upset by how um, divided and divisive this all is and how much money exists in this country um, that is, anyway, I can't even go on for it. But I think the goal is to, 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 have sto to tell stories, to, 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 tell, to have narratives that people can learn and attach to that mean something that can also entertain. Because I don't think that information and entertainment are mutually exclusive. I think that they can be combined, and I think it can be a way to activate people and empower people um, towards something for the greater good. And, and that's what excites me about becoming a storyteller, because I think that that's possible, and I think that we're ready for it. The, the power of storytelling you, you know, is really profound. You, you know, the news, I mean, Know, it's thrown about all the time now is fake news, you know, and, and facts don't really even mean anything. Science doesn't mean anything anymore. And people distrust all of it. And actually, you know, I get it. You know, there's the news, all of the stations feels like an assault on the senses. It's all kind of sens sensationalized. And, you know, how many <coughs> ways can you kind of talk about? you know, something awful, how many angles do you have to show it from? Like, it's actually, it's almost macabre. It's almost like a kind of, you know, fear-mongering masturbation. It's like, it's, you know, it's horrific. But with storytelling, with the nuances, you can tell these stories through a human perspective. And if people can relate to that, if they can kind of like those characters or even dislike those characters depending on what the story you're telling you're having an impact you're able to kind of get into their psyche without them kind of just kind of rejecting you create empathy yeah empathy and if there was empathy there would be no Donald Trump <laughs> if there was empathy true empathy there would be no separation thank you Hi. Hi. Um, Hello. So I was wondering if either of you want to work with um, actresses who have played women who love women. Like, um, also Joanne, like I know you're in a lot of indie movies. And, um, I was wondering if you'd like to work with like Molly Parker. I um, love, I've not never met her, but I love her work. It's so ethereal. Yeah. So, sorry, I'm um, kind of, what? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a microphone. We can't really hear you. Yeah. Sorry, I was a bit shaking. Um, <laughs> it's a safe space. Safe space. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if you guys would like to work with other actresses who play like women who love other women, like gay actresses, like gay characters or bi characters, those kinds of like, yeah, things. Yeah, listen, I don't consider, I don't, I don't look at people as based on sexuality. <laughs> I, I don't, listen, we live in a world that has been binary. But I don't believe in a binary system. I believe in a spectrum, like a rainbow. <laughs> so um, it doesn't pop for me. You know, that's why this relationship was so easy to do because I don't have a category in my head about people. I think people are people. People are sexually attracted to whoever, um, and maybe it's because I have that fluidity in myself, or maybe. But I think a good actor is a good actor. It doesn't matter That's who they're fucking for. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and also, and also, you want to be careful because that's part of the separation as well. You know what I mean? Like, you know, might be a, an amazing actress who's never played anything like that before, who's only played very straight or, you know, very um, heterosexual. But her next role could be something magnificent. So, you know, as long as somebody is authentic and you know, there's that light in their eyes and they want to play, then you know, they're gonna be amazing to work with and they and they're gonna be good for the cause too. Yeah. And then we have Cherry Jones and Sarah Paulson and you know, we, we do have these women and Ellen DeGeneres, women who have been very vocal about their sexuality, which is important, I think, just for acceptance, for mainstream acceptance. But I don't look at people I don't look at people like that. Never have, never will.
or um, artist in um, our audience, what words of advice would you give to young women in the middle of any woman that's trying to break into something for you? What advice would you give to them? You're immeasurably powerful, and the only person who knows that is you, and the only person who's standing in your way is you. Um, and I think that the more, the older I get, I realize how much we can get in our own way. And, um, and if you can do anything else, go do it. Because if you don't have a real passion for it, if there's anything else that you want, want to do, please go do it. Because this industry is not for the fan part. <laughs> I think would be my advice. Well, you know, most other industries, it's like, you know, it's like an X plus Z equals Y situation. You know, you put in this many hours and you put in this much focus and determination, you're going to get, you know, a certain result. You know, this is one of those um, careers, so make sure that it, it really, really is a passion. Um, but yeah, like connect to your instinct. I would say um, psychology is a really great place to look um, if you want to be an actor or an artist of any kind to have kind of that layer of kind of um, uh, depth to your work um, whether you whether you're painting whether you're singing you know kind of constantly trying to evolve constantly trying to understand yourself and, and go deeper and connect with your instinct and be true yeah and I just want to add one little thing because I found this very very helpful couple of years. Be careful what you consume. We live in such a culture where we see all the shit and all. Curate what goes into your mind and into your heart. Mm -hmm. Be careful. I'm not on social media, that's one of the reasons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's just too, uh, the kind of life that you want, if, which, which, which side are you going to feed? Mm -hmm. feed? Which wolf are you going to feed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The story of the true wolf. Yeah. Feed, them, feed the heart. Mm -hmm. Be careful. We just want to thank the both of you so very much.